Hello and welcome everybody. We are about to start round three here at the Cologne Regional Championships. I'm Lydia Hombach. I'm joined by our guest caster, Martin Wagner. Martin, how are you today? I'm, I'm really excited um, to see this uh, third round start. Uh, we just got the matchups. It's going to be uh, Mewtwo versus Malama, which uh, is a really difficult matchup for Mewtwo, one would say. Um, depending on the tech cards the Malama player chooses to play. Um, and it's a really interesting iteration of Mewtwo. So it is. He's, uh, he's playing Mewtwo's with uh, Jirachi and um, like m he's heavier on the, on the fire side. He's relying on Ninetales and only on Welder, um, like yep. the ability ratio that decks are. And that's uh, really, really interesting, and uh, it's going to be exciting to see how this uh, turns out. Yeah, and we also have uh, two interesting players. I think we have their accomplishment slides prepared, so we can introduce them a bit to you guys, so you're aware. Um, uh, we have Adam Hawkins from the UK. Um, he is a fairly accomplished player, player top four at internationals a regional champion and another top four and top eight at regional championships. So um, that's definitely a player to watch out for. Yeah, really, really accomplished, really solid, um, really also really consistent over yeah, time, that's which true. I think is really important. Uh, if you want to be one of the top players, you have to be really yeah. consistent. And with your uh, we can also have a look at his opponent. Um, uh, he is playing against Simone Canciano from Italy. Mm -hmm. um, he also has some accomplishments. I wonder if we could see them as well. That would be awesome. So, um, okay, we can't. We just look at Adam <laughs> instead. <laughs> oh, there they and are. Then we have uh, Simone oh, Canciani. I'm sorry, I pronounced his name wrong. Um, yeah, he played Greninja at the special event in Turin. Yeah, way back, way back. <laughs> <laughs> but we also know that before the, let's call it cash era, era, he was already playing and he had some accomplishments. So the name was, n w well, it sounded familiar to us. So he certainly has him. the experience yeah. um, in the in trading card game. It's not that new to the game. When we see them setting up, um, I guess they're replacing prize cards already. So yes, there they yeah. are. Oh, nice, that's a beautiful Lily promo. I w that's the first thing I noticed <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> from the regionals. Yeah. They are really nice. You can also get them here at this regional championship. Yeah, of right. course, of course. So, um, yeah, for Adam, it's kind of bad to have two Lilies prized. Yeah, he should be y fine. You kind of want to start with them. But oh, there's also the um, beautiful shiny Inke being flipped over. Um, com uh, coming from the latest Hidden Fates expansion, so yeah, really, really nice blinked out deck already. <laughs> um, yeah, as Adam is going first, wanting to find as many in case as pro uh, as possible. Yeah, he's playing a communication. Yes, he's going for the Jirachi. The Stellar Wish ability, obviously, really important to get going, get the item cards you need, and start setting up because Malama is a setup deck. Yes, uh, relies on getting those stage ones on board and charging up your attackers so you can stream them really easily. As we see, the gold Ultra Necrozma, really nice. Um, it's a really nice option to have. I think he's only playing the one Ultra Necrozma and one Metal Energy. So that's a really nice two cut package to have that yep. opens up a lot of options with the Sky Scorching Light GX attack in the late game um, in scenarios where your opponent doesn't expect it. As we see, Lily for four. Um, pretty solid, hoping to find some treasures or inkes. I see at least one mysterious oh treasure. Another one of these shiny inkay. Nice. He he <laughs> really got uh, got down his uh, rarity. Pretty pretty cool. <laughs> Indeed. I wonder if he actually plays for. I we can actually look that up. And he is. Yes, he is. He's also playing four of the shiny melama. <laughs> 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 oh my god. I mean, that makes sense. Shiny yes. in case evolve into yeah. shiny melama. Yeah, obviously. Why should they, they lose ca their they shine? Can't, <laughs> they can't uh, lose their shininess when they evolve. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. As we see, three in case come down and then a pass over. Um, as Simeon's hand. Um, yeah, he's just going to welder onto the Turtonator and see what he draws. I think he would have preferred to um, welder onto something bigger. Um, 
Also, he needs to discard um, two energies to KO the Jiratri since Turtonator is not a fire type and Jiratri is only weak to fire. So, yeah, he needs to discard two energy to just get this one um, KO. But his his deck is really really interesting. So he's playing um, he's playing one Reshizard um, and two Mewtwo, which as as his main tag team attackers. And he also has the he only plays fire energy. And um, he plays the package of attackers, um, like the package of fire attackers that uh, Mewtwo decks used to play, or that they usually play, um, but combines it with the um, yeah, Reshiram Charizard, the Nine Tails, the Jirachi engine, and only the Four Welders and the Palpit. So that's, yeah, you're trying to combine the best of both worlds, yeah. right? And um, yeah, I'm really excited to see how, how it turns out, how the deck actually works and functions. Yeah, that's actually uh, interesting to see, to try mixing two already established archetypes and try to get both uh, the advantages of both decks working. And looking at the deck list, it also doesn't look like it lost any consistency. So that's yeah, definitely Re an interesting deck. Reshizat is still, uh, like, it's a, it's a hit or miss deck anyway. Like, either you get going and you start your... Um, you get your welders flowing in the early turns, or you just uh, yeah don't get anything. But Mewtwo um, is like supplements this a little bit. Oh, he's he's actually not playing the Solgaleo. Um, oh I was yeah. about to say like Solgaleo can get like with two attachment Mewtwo can accelerate um, energies on board, but he's not playing that, so this is not an option. But yeah, Mewtwo pr um, provides a lot of options in the way you attack. And Nine Tails gives uh, the deck a consistent option to gust things up uh, that are on the bench, and yeah, it's really interesting. As the Turtene, uh, as the Dedene throws the Makago into the discard pile, which I don't think he want to attack with Makago in this matchup. You rather want to attack with something like Heatran um, or the Turtonator. Yeah, Heatran trades really well into Malama. If you get the first one-shot, they can't one-shot it back, yeah. so you get at least a two-for-two two trade, um, which is really nice. He still you see the first wall picks? Yes, the wall uh, picks is super nice. Which is gonna be really important in that matchup, because then you can bring up those Malamas, or even those Inkais, while they are little, and KO them very fast. Don't let them evolve. Don't let Adam get his energy engine going, so this is probably one of the key cards in this matchup. Yeah, it's uh, really uh, important. You can um, create like endgame scenarios where your opponent does not have any Malama on board if yeah. you just keep gusting them up, them up with nine tails and the loads of fire energy that you have in your deck. Yeah, as we see, the energy being attached to the Heatran 130 on turn one with three energies on board. Um, yeah, that's just the power of turn one welder um, for you. We also see Heat Factory in play already. Also yeah. being able to thin out the nice stack, find the yeah, yeah, find the energy um, when he needs them. Yeah, and really Adam nice. uh, Adam lost his Jirachi. He's only left with three NK, so um, he needs to get going now. Does he have a support at all? I can't see S4. Yeah, that's Erica. Erica, S4 also not really a card you want to bench already. Yeah, you usually want to bench it when it can take one shot on yep. a damage Pokemon on the bench. Because uh, since you have no Pokemon recovery, um, uh, if it gets knocked out earlier, you just lose that option completely, which is really, really bad. Um, Indeed. Yeah. Acrobike. And now we unfortunately can't see what his options are. He's looking through his hand, just make the, make yeah. the right choice. And Might not be the easiest decision now. I mean, he, he really needs some something. <laughs> Sometimes you just hit really unlucky acrobikes. I, uh, if you play all those one-offs, like Ultra Necrozma and the Metal Energy and the Espion Deoxys and the Esper, like all these cards are one-offs. And if you have hit both of them in one acrobike, you have to decide like really early, okay, I want to have this option for the rest of the game and you lose the other option completely and your opponent knows that as well. So, yeah, sometimes the acrobikes become really tough. That's also a problem for um, ability rushes out, in my opinion. Like, we, we all have been there, like, acrobiking into Welder and Victinio Prism style and be like, well... Oh, and it looks like he discarded the SP yes. on the Oxys in order to get a Malama. Yes. So, tough. 
tough decision, definitely. And we see a mysterious treasure. Does he have a Giratina in this? Like, he probably needs to get an attacker going. Yeah, he um, does. Maybe, yeah, does getting, the uh, getting the Giratina now. And uh, discarding it immediately, which makes sense because it can always come back from the discard pile. So very nice setup. So even though his Jirachi got knocked out on turn one, still having a strong setup, establishing a good board position, and just is uh, gonna be good to go and chain Giratinas from now on, yeah. um, and just throw it up, do 130 every turn, which is re really really strong. So yeah. And it was also quite a strong poker face from Adam because from his face and the way he looked at his hand, I would have thought he, he had nothing really to work with, but he did. <laughs> yeah, really nice. <laughs> and uh, he's well he's well set up now. He has two Melama, so he can use the ability to get two energies on the Garantina, another energy from hand, spell tag, and he also has a switch in hand. Yeah, spell tech is uh, really important because it forces the um, Mewtwo or Reshizad player to gust around it every single turn. And uh, because you never want to activate a spell tech. Like, um, if you. Uh, it, it can just swing the price trade, so, uh, price trade so heavily when putting damage counter on Ninetales or Jirachi. And you lose your either you lose your free pivot um, if Jirachi gets KO'd, um, or you lose your gust for the game if um, Ninetales gets KO'd. So, yeah. So for those of you who might not be that familiar with the cards or the meta game, you can always type exclamation mark Dax in the chat, and it will let you know what decks the uh, the players are playing, and you will get a link to our website which shows you the average deck list. So it will have slightly more than 60 cards, showing you how many cards the archetype usually plays, uh, like how many copies of a card the archetype on average plays. So uh, you can definitely check that out, read through the cards to understand what's going on a little bit better if you're new to the game. Yeah. But to let's get back to what's Stella happening Stellar Wish here. into three energies and to Pokemon, and he can't grab anything. Um, really unlucky for Simeone right there. Uh, yeah, I think he's switched into Jirachi, so he still has the option to retreat it and g get a KO. So um, that's pretty nice. But he re you really want to see the Ninetales come down right now. You really, really don't want... If, I e need it. if the Ninetales doesn't come down, um, Adam can just put four damage counters on the Vulpix and then Distortion on the next turn yep. to KO the Vulpix and... Um, and get uh, and get a KO with a Shadow Impact on the Heatran, so he will be up in the price trade already. Yeah. So, so what will happen is that if Simone now KOs the Girantina, mm -hmm. Spell Tech gets activated. So Spell Tech, the two card attached Girantina, will allow Adam to place four damage counters on Simone's field. So if he puts them on Vulpix, Vulpix has only ten HP left. So yes. with Desortion door going back to the bench. Uh, like when Girantina is in the discard pile, he can use Desortion door, put another two damage counters, um, like two two damage counters on two, like one damage counter on two different bench Pokemon. Mm -hmm. So then he can KO the Vulpix. Yeah, without even attacking, which is pretty nice. You just get a free prize card yep. in the middle of your turn. Have more options. Really, really nice thing that Malama can do. Yes, as we see exactly that. Beautiful setup. Like it, um, Adam set that up really nicely uh, by did. like putting the Giratina, not putting it on the bench, but putting it into his discard pile and getting the first, yeah, as we see, KO. And yeah, first KO, and now also the Esper is active. It can attack. And um, oh yeah, right. So this will probably go to Heatran as it's. But l let's wait. I don't want a fortune tell. <laughs> 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 I think it's probably fine to just um, um, stream Giratinas right now. As we just see, like uh, Adam, even though Adam's hand is not really good, ri like he didn't play Supporter, right? His hand is the only card in hand is Viridian Forest. Um, he he's still in a really really nice position and only needs to take three more prize cards. Yeah, the thing is, Malama is one of those setup decks where at some point you can just live from your board. You don't yes. really need any new cards that you draw into because even the Garantina, it can always come back. 
you will never lose it. That, that's yes. a very nice thing. Yes, now the pressure is definitely on um, Simeone to find an answer and um, yeah, find yeah, the nine tails. It also puts him into the awkward position because now he doesn't really want to, to want to bench the tag team. So. Also, um, I think uh, Simeone doesn't play Jirachi GX. So if the Mewtwo comes down, there will be no way to turn off its psychic weakness, which is horrible against Malama. Yeah, that's true. That's probably why we haven't seen it already. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maybe he wants to yeah attack, uh, attack with Reshizad. It's his best option, I think. Um, because these like the one price attacker um, that Reshizad plays are really resource intensive. Like it's not worth Usually it's not worth to discard three energy for one prize or Victini for just to KO Giratina, right? You want to um, have your energies on the big basic guys that can't get KO'd really easily and can just stream attacks every turn. It's also extremely interesting to notice that Simona hasn't revealed that he's actually playing the Mew Mew. I mean, so he, he has got all his stage twos uh, and ones in his discard pile. Yeah, so Adam okay, knows true. that something is up, but he doesn't know that's like he he hasn't seen the card just yeah. yet. But yeah, true. Yeah, no um Simeone can't get down a Vulpix, uh, like can't get down Night Tails, he can get down Vulpix and go for Night Tails next turn. Um but uh he will activate spell tech, so if he puts down Vulpix, the damage will uh, if he chaos the Giratina right. with the spell tag, will probably go on the Vulpix, and but then, yeah, and then it can get knocked out by two distortion doors, which is um, super bad, as he has to discard three energy to KO this one price Giratina. Yeah, um, it's an awkward trade, but now both are down to three prices, and uh, with the with the Turtonator in the active position, Adam can't really place like he he can't really touch the tag team right now so even if he chaos the turgenator and then simona goes into the active position with the rashiam charizard adam still has to go and ko that rashiam charizard tag team jigs so simona doesn't lose anything when sacrificing the turgenator yeah that's true oh he adam got finally got uh, a cynthia so he can just shuffle his hand back and I think putting the four damage counter or the the damage counter under the Dedenne is actually really really smart um, because it open up opens up the Esper play a lot. Yep. Um, and you can so snipe yeah. around it. So Esper's attack says that for one colorless energy you can uh, put the double amount of damage counters that are already on a benched Pokemon to that Pokemon. So it basically triples the amount of damage that is on the Pokemon. Yes, right there. Also, uh, that this is a line of play that we talked about in one of our earlier rounds because it leaves the Turtonator active, right? This yep. three-retreat three, uh, three retreat Pokemon is just stuck in the active and if Simeone does not get a welder um, to move it or a switch or anything, um, then he can lose another turn from it. So it's looking uh, really grim for him right now. Yeah, as you see, also uh, Jinx is really interesting inclusion. We saw... Um, in like April last year, yep. Malama play uh, Malama decks picking it up um, for the ability to just place damage counter um, uh, on the opponent's board, and it has really nice synergy with Esper. So you it can. It does indeed. Yeah. So we see ten more, six more, uh, like six on the Dennis. So the Dennis is now in Esper KO range, and we see a retreat to Jinx. Oh, and KOing the Vulpix, so Makes sense. it takes away the Nine Tails option once again from Simeone. Like Adam is uh, is is doing a great job denying yeah. um, the the like denying Simeone a reasonable bot state to um, to come back into this game. He's really like draining him out of his resources. He's and like I think that's checkmate, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, be because. Um, yeah, because Adam has the Esper on board, he has three Malama on the bench, so he can just attack, attach the energies through the Esper. He has two Psychic Energy in his discard pile, but he still has the Recycle Energy in hand. Yes. So uh, he can just 
use the second attack of Esper and KO the Dedan. Yes, that's true. And uh, Simeone has no way of uh, carrying the Esper right now, since uh, Adam has done such a great job of uh, getting rid of these Vulpixes. So, yeah, really, really great play. Yeah, and even if... Uh, because Esper only goes to benched Pokémon, right? So even if he puts it in the active position, he could just go in with uh, the... Oh, actually, he could then use the Guarantina. Yeah, that's the Guarantina yes. on the bench, so... Yeah. He would still... No, that would be fine. I think so. I um, yeah, I think anyway, Simeon is in, in, a, in a really bad spot right now because Malama has this access to the bench damage. I've seen some Reshizard decks play... Um, Mew to prevent like bench snipes from the Neganatal actually mm -hmm. from like Blasephalon or Mewtwo but uh, since uh, Simeone's list is already so tight since he plays Jirachi package the, Mew th uh, the Mewtwo's with all the different attackers the Ninetales and stuff there's just no space for Mew yeah. so yes oh, I think the only problem now is like yeah you have to Durantina retreat. Durantina has two retreat costs, right? Or is it three? Even three, I think. But, but I think even mm, three is actually a bit problematic. Yeah, it's three retreat. But if Adam just needs to find a switch. Oh, oh he has three Malama on board, so he can just uh, um, Psychic Recharge three times. and. But he needs three energies on yeah, the Espor. Yeah, yeah, but he can uh, get either switch or escape out now. Ah, true. So escape out becomes an out now, even. So improving his odds even more. So we'll see. Oh, oh. he whiffed it. It's not that. I mean, he sh should have one more turn. He should have one more turn. He has one more turn, right. And since uh, there's no Vulpix on Simeone's board... I mean, he can charge up the energies to the S4. Yes. And then hope that Simeone is going to KO the Durantina. I think I think that's fine. Uh, he's, he's, still, he's still fine, Simeone. Um, oh, he's actually only attaching two energies, which makes sense because if the Durantina gets KO'd, he gets the Recycle energy back to his hand. Yes. Like, uh, Recycle energy is such a nice inclusion in Malama, right? Because you, like, Giratina has this colorless and it's a tech cost, and you get it back every single turn, just yeah. like the Giratina. So, as you said, the bot's, uh, bot state sustain sustains itself yep. really nicely. Yeah, you can even ensure that you're not missing your hand attachment. That's really insane. If you get good mal on my hands, then <laughs> you true. you will just that's true. you will just roll and have a great time. But that that's always a problem with the setup decks. Of you course, you need to get your setup done, and then you're fine most of the time. You just need to get to the point first. Yeah, I think it, uh, a lot of it came down to like Simeone just uh, when when he had his first turn, he just welded onto the Terminator, and not a lot of stuff happened. No Vulpix came down, and yeah. it just it was a turn too late, I think. He gave Adam too much time to set up his board position and um, dictate the pace of the game from there. Yeah, I think al also the problem was that he d did always only bench one Woolpix. Yeah, if so two come down at the yeah, same time. Yeah, two at the same time, not like the same thing you needed to do with the Rock Ruffs, always bench two he at even the same time. He even plays Ditto, so he has yeah. the option to bench Ditto and a Woolpix. I think Ditto is actually really, really smart um, because you can evolve your Ditto into like the uh, attackers that you normally would get into the discard pile, like you can evolve your Ditto into Makago GX, mm -hmm. um, which is really, really interesting and a funny interaction that could mi that might occur. But yeah. I think uh, we just saw a game from Adam Hawkins. Um, he, w he was playing that really well. The hand cards played out really well for him. So uh, he was definitely in the draw advantage. Beautiful Maloma gameplay, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sentence we don't hear that often. <laughs> yeah, but but I, I think he played it really, really well, the deck. Like, um, he... Um, the, the, the placing damage counters of Mal The placing damage counters aspect of Maloma really uh, pulled through in this game. Like, um, yeah. he was able to take advantage really, really quickly. 
Um, yeah, the, uh, the the weakness of Malama is uh, probably that it is so slow and tends to tie if you lose like the second game. So um, either you just draw well in both games and it's fine, you get to play both games and hopefully win. Um, but if you draw bad in the second game, you have to be ready to scoop very, very yeah. early. And I think that's something that, like the decision of when to scoop is something of the skills that distinguish a high level player from just a very good player. Yes. So you can play perfectly fine, but this is one of those decisions that you also only start optimizing when you've optimized everything else. So that's definitely something interesting to think about and also to like. Yeah, because you want to you want to win, right? You want don't want to tie. So yeah. you want to give yourself as much opportunities as possible to win the game. Yeah, and and especially in those early early rounds of the game, you want to start good. So even in case you tie a lot earlier, your tiebreaker is still better because you've played against good opponents because you had a good ra r r ha, a good <laughs> record in the beginning. I'm sorry, <laughs> but um, we see the players doing their setup. Um, Price is coming down. Oh, both power plant, uh, two power plants, prize, but. Adam was fine in the first game without it, but it's a really, really useful card in this matchup. Like it is. Simona playing those um, Deden and of course also the Mew Mew. So, so even though I doubt he, uh, doubt he would bench it like um, in in this matchup, but still it's relevant to see Heat Factory drawing three more cards, giving himself more options, also with the Stellar Wish. Yeah, no, he can if he. Yeah, I would thin out the deck first, and then Stellar Wish. Hopefully, get a Welder. Yep. And um, yeah, he can get a lot uh, down a lot of Pokemon this turn. He can. Um, so he would have a really stable setup. The Turgenator goes back in. Let no good job during setup last game. So <laughs> he decided to stick with something else. Yeah, he's keeping the Nine Tails because um, he can just evolve his Woolpix next turn. Like like this time, there's no threat of the Woolpix going down on yep. the next turn. Probably. Um, yeah, but and uh, then he can just immediately evolve the bull picks into the nine tails and have the gust option. True. And uh, we see him looking through his deck, checking his welders. One we is prize. Yeah, one is prize, but that should still be good. Yeah, it would be really good for him to hit one of the welders of the Stellarish right here. Yeah, of course. I mean, you actually want a welder. Yeah, the almost like every turn. He only plays one pull pet though, so he's playing this. Like it's it's a bit sad that he's up against Malama, right? Because um, he's not gonna use his Mewtwo and Fire Energy uh, package as he gets the weld of the Stellar Wish. <laughs> Beautiful, <laughs> very nice, very well played. Um, as he like because he doesn't want to get down the Mewtwo. I wonder Mewtwo's. why he didn't play the Cherish Ball first. Though. Because if he like if he dead draws off this welder. I think the reason is if he dead draws off this welder, he can any um, just charge ball for the Dene and then yeah, get a new hand. But he has the nine tails in his hand, so he wants to keep this hand anyway. So I think uh, you can debate uh, whether because now he had to attach the energies to the Vulpix, mm -hmm. which is not that nice. Yeah, would but he can probably if the Vulpix lives, which I think there's no way for Malama to KO it on turn yeah, one. Yeah, no, that should. Um, be. Yeah. Um, then he can just move the energies off with uh, with Heatran, so it should n not be a problem to um, to to get rid of these energies on the Vulpix. That's but true. it all uh, comes down to what Adam exactly does on his. And turn. he decided to not play the Cherish Ball still. Yeah, just holding his hand, seeing uh, his options for the next turn, which is fine, I think. Maybe ju just. Um, Bluff the dead draw a little bit. Like, see, I have nothing going on, opponent. Wha what, what, what are you gonna do? Maybe I don't know. Um, so see, Giratina, spell tag, and Cynthia. Perfect. You always want to see those draw supporters on turn one. When, when, when you with draw supporter with Malama on turn one, it's just, it's just a horrible experience. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, we see Adam drawing six fresh new cards from the Cynthia. Hoping to get some communications Pokemons in case. Mysterious treasure. So, he should be fine. 
he should. He also has uh, the uh, skateboard he could go for. Yes, yeah. give him, uh, give yourself a uh, free, uh, free retreater already. Maybe even retreat into the other Jirachi, get up another Stellar Wish, if you're not happy with your setup, since you can't attack on um, this turn anyway. Just uh, retreat, um, leave the Jirachi with the escape yeah. pod on the bench, and then your active Jirachi gets knocked out, it's fine, you have Jirachi with the escape pod on your bench that you can promote, get another uh, free Stellar Wish in, and... Yeah. That's what we are going That's to exactly see That's exactly what's going to happen, right. Sell our wish. Oh, yeah, going for the mysterious treasure. Um, I guess it makes more sense to hold on to it. Yeah, you want you definitely yeah. want to find your Malamas on the on the following turn. Uh, oh, he there's just also has an the in inke in his hand. That, so of course <laughs> he's holding on to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very nice setup by Adam, both games. He draws insanely well. If you, if I would draw like that, I play Malama in every tournament. <laughs> 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 Probably, we all would. <laughs> <laughs> so yet now, now it's gonna be really interesting what uh, Simeone decides to find with his uh, ball search cards and his Pokemon search cards in his hand. Now there's a second Woolpix. We've talked about that, and he is going for Heatran. Okay, move probably. M Looking for a switch of the Stellar Wish and the Daily Change to move the energy. He has a follow-up in, in, in his hand, so... Playing down the Ninetales. Maybe even maybe he will even use it. Yes, yeah. KO, the NK, really important. Also, it leaves the Jirachi uh, on the field, so it doesn't give uh, Adam another mm -hmm. free bench spot. Um, yeah, the Jirachi is still in play. And um. it's going to be kind of useless, because you get another one with an escape board, which you would l use... Um, uh, like more like which are you which you are more likely to use? Yeah, and we see the Stella Wish currently in action. Um, going for a Cherish Ball. He's not playing the Cherish Ball just yet. He has a switch in hand. Okay, so nice. He just needs some way to get the energies to the Heatran. Really? He, he hasn't played a supporter yet, right? No, no, he just did it changed. Okay. Going I think uh, it would have been maybe a little bit more optimal to put this one welder back into the deck with Palpat to have uh, yeah. more options to draw it. Uh, because, because he knows that one is yeah, prized. Yeah, one is prized. He knew it from the deck search earlier. But I think there's also merit to it just, to just holding it and um, like maybe get more value out of it later yeah, when actually. shuffling back to... I mean, he only plays one pole pad, yes. so you really want to optimize that one. And, I mean, obviously Heatran is able to get that energy to himself anyways, or herself, <laughs> itself. <laughs> 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 and we see the first NK being KO'd. Yes. We also see the first Melama. Now, Adam really needs to find a way to um, stop Simeone from gusting up his uh, Malamas every single turn. Ideally, he would set up um, for AKO on this Ninetales, if that's possible, like with um, the combination of Distortion Door and Jinx and um, some other stuff. Because if you lose all your Malamas, then um, yeah, your deck doesn't just doesn't function anymore. So um, that is that is um, something that Simeone could play for if he uh, has the option to do so with and gets enough fire energy. Yeah, but Simon now being in a very, very good position. On, on the opposite side, Adam still struggling a bit. I mean, Heatran, as you already said, he offers this awkward price trade with the 190 HP. So you still need two attacks from the Giantina to get it KO'd, even with spell tag. Yes, so. it's gonna be really, uh, really huge that it just sits in the active and sponges a hit from from Giratina. Yeah, that's also he's debating whether to bench the Mew. Um, that's also a really interesting approach I've seen some players take. Just KO the try to go for the um, uh, Nine Tails with uh, the Mew and ping it. Because um, it's fine when you're behind in the price trade as the Malama player. You try to catch up eventually due to spell takes, 
set up maybe set up for a very late game SP on the Oxus or Sky Scorching Light. Yeah. Um, and KO um, a lot of threats at the same time. Um, yeah, and just s uh, swipe the opponent's board. Yeah, I mean, Adam sure knows what he's doing. We've seen in the first game that he he played this perfectly, and I'm sure that he's also doing the most optimal decision here. So wha what is really interesting, right? He he KO'd the Vulpix, uh, the Vulpix, both Vulpixes in, in game one back to back. Yep. Being like, okay, Simeone, bench two Vulpixes at once, and now he can play to an end game where Sky Scorching Light is able to take more prizes because mm -hmm. more low HP Pokemon are on the field because Simeone was like, okay, um, if you're gonna chase my Vulpix again, I will probably lose again. And uh, he had to bench, basically had to bench both of them. Yeah. Um, True, yeah, that's probably... It's really smart. No, if it's perfect way of Simona approaching this. Yes. And we see one welder getting shuffled back yeah, in. Yeah, now, now he's shuffling it back in. Probably wants to hit it off the... If he's going for data change, probably wants to hit it. I mean, he doesn't need any more energy on both this turn, but it's n probably never a bad thing. Um, yeah. But he's getting rid of a lot, but it's all Pokemon. Yeah, it's a lot of. Oh, he's drawing more Pokemon even. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's all Jirachis and Mewtwo. He is playing a lot of Pokemon, right? Yeah. He's playing that theme deck that people were joking at at Worlds. Yeah. 18 fire energies. 22 trainer cards, 20 Pokemon cards. That's a 20-20-20 rule. <laughs> Very interesting. Um, yeah, But I think um, playing more Pokemon is not that bad because it makes your communication stronger, obviously. True. With Reshizat, it's sometimes awkward when you get like two communications and no Pokemon. So you can't communication for, um, uh, for Vulpix or anything. So playing more Pokemon is not that bad, I think. It's... Uh, I think it's a really interesting approach, and um, the the Mewtwo package will probably work out um, very well against uh, decks like like the ability Reshizard or um, even surprising another Mewtwo player or a Pikachu Zekrom player um, with the like 300 out of nowhere. So I really like the inclusion. It's just he has hit uh, not the best matchup, I would assume. Yeah, gusting up another Malama, that's uh, really important. And now it's a Malama, not an NK. Yes. And the Malama getting KO'd, and Adam now only has one NK on the bench, not even a Malama. So that's really not looking too good for Adam here. Yes, and um, time is running low, so like we only have 15, 15 more minutes, and uh, that's like these players are probably aware of it and they need to they need to speed up their gameplay a little bit probably if they want to finish yes, um, they do. more games so and that's what we've talked about at the beginning of this game that as a good Malama player or as one of the best Malama players you need the skill to decide whether a game is over or not but I am not a highly skilled Malama player so I don't know. Is the game already over? If he can establish of the of the Cynthia, if he can establish like um, another another Malama, mm, it can be fine, I think, because he's got the Ditto Prism Star down as well. So it's basically just like he benched another Inke. Um, yeah, I think he still has options for. If he needs to attack with Giratina in the first place, like this yeah. is there's there's no doubt. Um, and if you can attack with Giratina, get the Malama, mm, then I would. I think there's a point to continuing the and playing the game. But if you, yeah, he's he has the Malama, so. But that's I only think it's one fine. Malama. But he can like still attach an energy psychic recharge and then attack with Giratina and keep his uh, stream of attackers going. Um, yeah, it's mm, it's also difficult because um, if like. If Simeone can um, ch keep gusting up the Malamas, then there won't be an option for Espion Deoxys cleaning up late game. Yeah. The only thing he could do with one Malama is Sky Scorching Light, um, which is not that bad, right? It can get three prizes with the right setup mm. on the on the Ninetales. Um, 
Yeah, putting down spell text on Malama is actually that really makes important. Sense. Um, because he knows that probably yeah. Malama is getting. Yeah, KO'd. just protect the Malama. I think. Yeah. yeah, you will. You will always want to go for things that are not spell checked in this matchup when you're Simeone, and this way you're protecting your Malama. You're saying, yeah, if uh, so, you're saying in Adam's place, if you g gust up my Malama, I'm gonna get the spell check, and that's gonna be really helpful for me. So it's a nice trade-off, I guess. It is. Actually, how many HP does uh, Nine Tails have? One hundred. One hundred. Okay. If I recall correctly, what should be? So it still has sixty damage. So in theory, he could put the spell attack damage on Nine Tails, and with another Mew attack, Nine Tails would be good. I think. I think he wa He is like um, Adam will just uh, probably say like, okay, I'm gonna leave this Nine Tails on the board for now. And you have to invest resources, uh, like in the form of fire energy, to mm -hmm. gust up my stuff. And I just try to um, go for a clean up uh, late game with Sky Scorching Light. Yeah, but the problem is, three Malamas are already in the discard pile. Oh no. There's only one Malama left in deck. And it doesn't really look like he's playing any options of getting KO'd Pokemon back. So. It's definitely gonna be an uphill battle. There's no doubt. Yeah. And it looks like the Very Ditto Prism, Prism Star just got KO'd. Yeah, yeah, but he protected his Malama with the spell tech, so I guess that's fine. He has got at least one Malama, and if he wants to go for Sky Scorching uh, late game, he still has this option. But yeah, very strong Erika's for six. Um, it's a very nice option to have. Uh, of course, it's unfortunate when you see it on your first or second turn, but in Malama, you, since you play longer games and uh, your opponent tends to fill up their bench um, probably because they want to find their Pokemon. Um, it's it's a fine inclusion, I think. Um, let's see, it doesn't really get a lot of the Stellar Wish. Yeah, yeah. Viridian is fine. It makes sense. Getting it the energy. the Stadium. Helps you get the energy. Yeah. And also he got uh, the Inkay down to replace the Ditto Prism Star. So if he can put a spell tag on it, um, that would be great. Do you have any idea how many spell attacks Adam still has? One is in his prize cards. One is on the field. Ooh. I actually think two are on the field. Yes, two are on the field. Yeah. One on the Giratina and one uh, on the Malama. So, um, I think one should be in his deck, in his deck because I did not see him discard yeah. any. I also don't think that any got activated already, so... Yeah, really really nice played by uh, Simeone, just not uh, acti falling for the trap of, okay, I'm gonna kill the Malama, no, yeah, then you activate yep. spell attack and then um, that's uh, it becomes really difficult. Um, so, yeah, really nice. And I think uh, when you if you're Simeone, you want to uh, attack with Victini Prism Star very soon. Yep. He got uh, it in his hand um, fortunately, right now, um, because yeah, you want to get back the options of gusting your opponent's Pokemon and um, and Countering recover. The stadium already. Yeah, and and uh, recover all your stuff so you can uh, get back the Welders. But the disadvantage of Victini, it has very low HP, right? And yeah. um, if if uh, Adam gets enough damage counters on the board, then. Um, he can clean up with guys scorching light late game because Jirachi is on the board. There's a Wolpix that Simeone definitely needs to evolve very, very soon. Um, and also, Victini only has 90 HP, so one spell take could spell a lot of doom for him. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to find his last two fire energy um, to gust around his spell take once more. Um. And there's the Wilder. I actually think he has nine tails in hand. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely want to evolve this. And yeah, it comes down. There it is. Yeah. We see the welder attaching to. Att attaching to the nine tails, actually. I mean, he has nothing else to attack with, right? Oh, you want uh, he wants to force Adam to knock out his nine tails since he got the backup one, yeah. so he um, prevents the um, the the end game of the sky scorching light just 
KOing his whole board. If you KO, if you force the Malama players to KO the damaged Pokemon, they in then in the end they can't swing back the price trade. Makes sense, yes. So taking with Ninetales is actually fine. I believe he still has one fire in his hand and one fire in his deck, so he should be fine to just get a KO with Big Teeny next turn and um, still be able to um, yeah, gust up after that, but he will have to hit into a spell tech the following turn, I believe. Um, we see yeah. what's going to happen. He has just activated one spell tech, so Adam now debating where to put the four damage. This is really, really important. So where where would you put it? <laughs> mm, I actually I um, I think putting it on the other nine tails um, could be good, but mm, bec because then it only has sixty HP and you will mm -hmm. have to put damage there eventually. Um, but also just taking two prizes on it at any maybe is fine. Okay, he's gonna split the damage up. Yep. Yes. Yeah, he definitely wants to take. He knows that Sim uh, Adam knows that Simeone has to bench the Victini um, very, very soon. So, um, yeah, he he. I don't think um, that he will hit into the active uh, Nine Tails. I think he will either um, put damage counters on uh, Simeone's board with Mew. Or um, just try to snipe something with Esper, or put damage counters with Jinx, uh, because you don't want to. You don't want to KO this Nine Tails, which will get KO'd uh, anyway, right? Yeah, of course. You have your you have your Jinx attack. Um, I don't I don't know actually if Simeone knows that Adam is playing the Ultra Necrozma. If um, I think this information hasn't been revealed yet. So that's that is uh, actually a really smart play yeah. of Adam, not revealing this information. When you're playing against Spelltech, you usually e expect uh, Espion Deoxys, yeah. but you don't um, expect uh, Ultra Necrozma. So, if he has managed to hide this information all game, then it could be very, very huge for him. We see him getting. Ah, he's debating between Espor and Espion Deoxys. <laughs> and he's calculating a lot. Very, um, yeah. This decision needs to be correct if he wants to win this game. I, I think I would go with the Esper play, but yeah. <laughs> and Adam probably agrees. Nice. <laughs> and bench uh, sni snipe uh, snipe some damage. Um, probably on the Dedenne. Um, to set up set up your prizes. He also, I I um, I don't know if he has. I still don't know if he has a spell tech left. So um, if he would be able to find his spe uh, last spell tag. I'm fairly sure she he has a spell tag left. Yeah, he needs to find the spell tag. Oh, there, oh, it, there it is. Yeah. He has found it already. <laughs> Perfectly. So now he's he's in a pretty good position because he probably counted Simeon's energy in his discard pile and he knows that there are not enough energy left uh, to gust m with Ninetales and attack with Victini. And Simeone is in a really tough spot. Probably, but we'll see um, how it turns out. But definitely, um, it looked very grim for Adam, but he has managed to uh, pull back. Even though he's down by two prizes, even though he has four prizes left, he could still put himself in a position where he could th threaten the win next turn. Yeah, now he also has another mysterious treasure, so he could go for the last Malama he has. He doesn't have the Malama down, right? He needs, yeah, he yeah, needs he has to. Yeah, he's the MK down, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. okay. He needs to play the treasure first and actually get the Malama. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, sometimes your head is just one step ahead. Uh, you just ahead. go like, okay, I have this already, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, the, the damage will most definitely go on the Dedene, and um, then next turn, uh, next turn when um, Simeone has to basically he has to hit into the active Pokemon. He has no option to gas, yep. so he has to set up um, some attacker and hit into the Pokemon. Um, then the spell attack will be activated and. 
then Adam can place the damage counter s in a way that he can, it can place KO. them on nine tails and then use the uh, Mew to KO the nine tails. But and then go for um, with Espor. But actually, oh, I Espor I think I think he wants to um, take four prizes with um, Ojan Krosma. So you take you put one damage counter on Jirachi mm -hmm. and three on the Dene. And then the Dene has only 40 HP left. Yep. Nine Tails has only 60 HP left, and Jirachi as well. So you get four prizes with Sky Scorching true, Light. True. That's probably what he's playing too. I can't imagine anything else. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> we'll see what's going to happen. He needs the Ultronic Crossmap first. Yeah, this Victini will be doing a lot of damage if it, uh, if it comes down to this poor Esper. It should be enough to <laughs> deal 60 damage. <laughs> poor Esper. <laughs> I mean, he's playing 18 fire energies. One is in his prices. And three are on the field. And yes. one needs to be attached to Victini. Mm -hmm. So that should be... Probably 13 energies in his discard pile. So yeah, and also also concerning the time, um, there's no way that uh, like that uh, another game would finish. So this is probably the end after this game. Um, either Adam will win or Simeone uh, will force this into a tie. Yeah, probably. We, we have only about one and a half minutes left. So that's. Like Simone is not gonna win. The question is now: Is, is will he it gonna be a lose? Tie? <laughs> yeah, will it be a tie or is he gonna lose? He's <laughs> counting the stuff on board. Yeah, how many cards are in his ha in Adam's hand? So also uh, everything is valuable information. Yeah, but he knows if he if he hits into this Esper, then uh, the spell tech will activate, and uh, that's something he does not want to happen. So what do you do now? Is the question. Um, he could he could uh, gust something up and attack with nine tails but for ninety like with flame tail. Yeah, he has. But then he has no follow up if the nine tails gets KO'd. Yeah. But that could force the game into a tie. Like no. like, but that no, he needs to win anyway because Adam won game one. So yeah, he he has to win this game or he's just gonna lose. He's going, uh, he's putting nine tails into the active. And I think oh, we will see a nine temptations. Actually, if he draws the last, oh, never oh, mind. Okay. okay. He's, go he's gonna set up for another flame tail on the next turn. No, he Isn't? needs to gust right now. Yeah. And he's just gonna, yeah. He's gonna uh, flame tail for 90 and um, set up the, uh, yeah, try to, get a KO next turn with Victini. But I think if Adam uh, gets the Ultronic Crosma and the Psychic Energy, he can just win this turn. Yeah. And it's time now. Yes. So it's time in the round. Yeah. And uh, I think Adam is turn zero. Adam is turn one, okay. Because time was called between turns, Adam is turn one. Yeah, let's see if all the pieces for Ultra Necrozma are in the stack. Yeah, there's the Metal Energy. There's the Ultra Necrozma. Yes. Oh. And Simeone is like, yeah, I knew I knew it was <laughs> coming. Like, when your opponent does this and set up, sets yeah. up everything so it has 60 HP left, you know what's coming, most likely. He still needs the Ultra Necrozma, though. Yeah, if he has a mysterious treasure in his hand. Oh, Acrobike. Oof. This could be interesting. He has no mis- okay. If there's a mis mysterious treasure in his deck, he is probably gonna hit it, so... So Lily first. Which makes sense. Stella Wish. Communication, all oh, right. Okay. So you will be able to communication. The Espion Deox is back. The Ultra Necrozma comes down and so does the Handshake. And that's game for Adam Hawkins. Oh my god. And Simeon is showing him, yeah, there my last fire energy was priced. Probably he could have taken a different approach um, if this one wouldn't was not priced. But very well played. Yeah, honestly. 
I would have probably conceded <laughs> <laughs> and like got into game two, see if I can still win the, the third game. But wow, that that was exciting to watch. Yeah, it really showed the comeback potential and the like the board wipe with Ultronic yeah. Crosma. Um, with even without playing reset stamp, like the comeback card in the format, and Adam wasn't even playing that, so really, really uh, well done. Definitely, and unfortunately, because this game already got into time, we don't want to delay the, tour the tournament any longer, so we again won't have a winner's interview. I hope we can get one for you soon. Um, but yeah, that was a really, really good game to watch. I've enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, it and was really uh, fun. Yeah, <laughs> it definitely was. So I would say we would we will go into a quick break, grab yourself something cool to drink, some snacks, but don't stay away for too long. We will be back with round four shortly. We will be back.